Misanthropy symbolizes an extensive aversion or profound skepticism towards humanity, steering from a deep-rooted disbelief, disdain, or contempt for human beings and human nature. Those fostering such pessimistic perspectives are termed as misanthropes or misanthropists. The term springs from the union of two Greek words, misos misos, meaning hatred and anthropos, anthropos signifying man, human. Misanthropy originates from a negative evaluation of humanity, focusing on inherent flaws of human beings. Misanthropes argue that these imperfections are the identifiers of the vast populace necessitating a radical cultural shift for their rectification. The academic discourse categorizes varying shades of misanthropy, taking into account the attitude driving it, its target, and its expression this. Pessimistic disposition could stem either from negative emotions or abstract judgment, and could be directed at all or specially exempted individuals. Misanthropy paints a picture of a person striving to harm others or desiring isolation from society. However, other forms of misanthropy could manifest as activism towards humanity's betterment, a resigned acceptance of fate, or a humorous approach highlighting the absurdity of human existence. The negative image of misanthropy often draws upon different facets of human imperfection, primarily moral transgressions like cruelty, apathy towards others' pain, selfishness, injustice, greed, among others, having harmful repercussion on humans and animals alike. Intellectual shortcomings like dogmatism, cognitive biases, or aesthetic failures concerning insensitivity to beauty and fascination with ugliness also contribute to this image. While proponents of misanthropy assert that the extent of human flaws warrants a condemnation of the human race, their critics argue that these flaws exist only in isolated extreme cases or mentally ill perpetrators, not representing the entire human species. They further argue that humans possess virtues that offset their flaws, hence a fair assessment could be optimistic and positive. Critics also object to misanthropy due to its association with hatred and the potential for violence. While its proponents argue that such associations only apply to certain forms of misanthropy and not to its entirety, focusing on the theme of misanthropy, the narrative explores the idea of a central disdain for humanity as a collective. Misanthropy, a term with 17th century roots, traditionally translates to a hatred or dislike of humankind. Modern philosophy, however, expands this definition to encompass any negative evaluation of humanity. Rooted in human failings and vices hatred is only one of myriad expressions of this negative judgment. It's an introspective insight rather than a blind rejection of humankind. While philanthropy inclines towards love for humanity, reflected in charitable acts enhancing human welfare, it doesn't stand in direct opposition to misanthropy. Interestingly, the same individual could embody aspects of both. Core to misanthropy is its sweeping target, humanity as a whole, distinguishing misanthropes from racists, misogynists, and misandrists who aim negativity towards specific groups. This doesn't necessarily imply every misanthrope despises all humans. The distaste may be confined within their immediate surroundings, like a villager disliking fellow villagers. The universally shared understanding is that negative traits are unevenly dispersed, with some individuals exemplifying these more than others. But misanthropy isn't gauged on extreme examples. It paints the entire human race, even the commonly seen instances, with a broad brush of disapproval. Often, these flaws are viewed as trivial or obvious, dismissed due to intellect-related shortcomings. Some attribute these flaws to inherent human nature, while others draw from contemporary issues as the driving force of their negativity. Regardless, the consensus is that these flaws are entrenched, deeply set and resistant to correction without a radical overhaul of the prevailing lifestyle, presuming that's even possible the thought at the backbone of it all. Some choose to champion antinatalism, a stance against human reproduction. Let's explore the theme of varying shades of misanthropy and how these antagonistic beliefs towards humanity vary from person to person. Some misanthropes include themselves in their adverse critique of humanity, ensuring that their standpoint remains unblurred by hypocrisy. These individuals stand in stark contrast to those misanthropes who contrarily present themselves as superior beings, selectively excluding themselves from their accusation of the human race. These self-glorifying misanthropes tend to indulge in a heightened sense of self-importance, which Joseph Harris deems it as fairly common yet hypocritical. Irving Babbitt takes this categorization further, discussing the divide between misanthropes who consider humanity universally irredeemable 
and those who consider certain exceptional individuals as excluded from their critical appraisal. He exemplifies the difference between these variations with Rousseau's portrayals of uncivilized man versus Swift's outright dismissal of the whole human race. Another angle to understanding the degrees of misanthropy, suggested by Toby Svoboda, involves the underlying attitude towards humanity. Whether it's based on dislike, hate, contempt, or judgment, a misanthrope who behaves out of dislike or hate may not always yield logical explanations for their attitudes, however. Judgments and contempt could derive from more theoretical outlooks and may often exclude the individual from their general disapproval. Lastly, Svoboda differentiates misanthropes based on their coping mechanisms to their disdainful attitudes towards humanity. While some respond with manifestations of destruction or violent rebellion, others prefer to retreat and isolate themselves from society. These varying responses add to the complexities of the misanthropic perspective, enriching our understanding of the shades within this theme. Personal inadequacies are extensive, encompassing cruelty, greed, wastefulness, dogmatism, self-deception, indifference to aesthetics, and more. The story highlights moral deficiencies as the most severe type of flaws, since these promote harmful attitudes or behaviors, such as injustice, selfishness, apathy towards other suffering, and moral laziness. Humans cause harm both directly and indirectly, not only to their species, but also to other animal species and the environment, as exemplified by instances like the Holocaust, livestock factory farming, and environmental degradation leading to climate change. Let's explore the concept of intellectual shortcomings, the cognitive impediments leading to false beliefs, obstructed knowledge, and violations of rationality. It cites instances of intellectual vices such as arrogance, dogmatism, and cognitive biases. These flaws deceive individuals about their own inadequacies, which stops them from self-improvement. They also encompass willful ignorance and denial, leading some to believe that ignorance could be at the root of all evils. Finally, aesthetic flaws, though given less importance compared to morale and intellectual ones, are also integral to the narrative. These are mostly associated with disparaging aspects of human life, such as aging and fecal matter. Further illustrations include environmental degradation and insensitivity towards aesthetics and beauty. Admiration of another person, especially a close friend, can often lead to disappointment and consequently misanthropy. misanthropy. The tendency to consider oneself morally superior to others can fuel this attitude. The teachings of philosophers such as Thomas Hobbes, influenced by the political instability of his time, and Arthur Schopenhauer, a victim of displacement, encourage such behavior. Misanthropy can also stem from an aversion towards the human body or a repulsion towards sexuality. Socioeconomic inequality, authoritarianism, and political repression can act as catalysts for a misanthropic outlook. An unequal distribution of wealth can instigate mistrust in government and societal structures, indirectly leading to misanthropy by implementing policies promoting trust and equality. The rise of misanthropy could potentially be prevented or reduced. Conversely, democratic regimes offering an optimistic view of human nature and assuring personal freedom tend to discourage misanthropic outlooks. Typically, trust in others acts as an indicator of one's misanthropic tendencies and is often used for measurement in empirical studies. According to a study conducted by Tom W. Smith on American society, the key variables contributing to the rise of misanthropy are low socioeconomic status, belonging to racial or ethnic minorities, and recent exposure to negative life events. In terms of religious disposition, those who refrain from church attendance or are rigid in their beliefs tend to be more misanthropic interestingly. Factors such as gender, divorce, or marital status appear to be irrelevant. Furthermore, Morris Rosenberg's study highlights an intriguing connection between misanthropy and political perspectives, a skepticism of free speech and endorsement of authoritarian policies. It implies a tendency to suppress political and religious liberties. However, it doesn't seem to be significantly tied to broader political affiliations, such as Democrat Vs, Republican or Liberal Vs, conservative affiliations. Only mentally unstable individuals or ordinary people under extreme circumstances are liable for heinous acts. Hence, such extreme cases shouldn't be generalized to foster an overall negative view of mankind. Though vile deeds such as mass genocide by dictators occur, they're inadequate to denounce all humans' misanthropes counter these arguments by suggesting innate flaws exist within all. 
Though only some exhibit extreme version, they acknowledge that everyday humans who stand by, indirectly support such actions, or commit small acts of dishonesty, also contribute to this negativity. An interesting perspective from Svoboda employs a thought experiment about an alien ecosystem where one species dominates, causing environmental disasters and species extinction. This fictitious case is used as a metaphor for humanity on Earth. Warranting a negative outlook, critics might argue that such a grim depiction should target specific social forces rather than the whole of mankind. These might include harmful systems such as capitalism, religious fundamentalism, or imperialism, believed to be the main drivers of human tragedies, therefore. Combating these systems should be prioritized over rejecting mankind and it. However, Svoboda counters by arguing that these harmful systems are bred and upheld by human complicity. One argument that misanthropy undervalues is mankind's propensity for good. The negative might be present, but it is also complemented by equally present positive traits. Critics of misanthropy argue that an emphasis on horrific tales from history overlooks the positive strides in the sciences, arts, and humanities, negative figures such as Hitler or Stalin, although relevant, should be juxtaposed with positive figures like Mother Teresa or Gandhi. The complexity of humanity makes it challenging to draw sweeping comparisons. But it's worth noting that misanthropes often counter that negativity is more prevalent, with positivity being the exception they maintain that. Even within specific areas, such as animal treatment, mankind tends to fall short. The validity of the critique levied against misanthropy depends largely on the nature of the misanthropy in question. Criticisms appear accurate for versions of misanthropy rooted in anger and destruction, but are off-target for versions that are instead based on a peaceful, philosophical perspective. There are arguments that misanthropy is morally objectionable, and while true for certain misanthropes, it does not resonate with all, as some assert that the philosophical stance of misanthropy does not necessarily clash with moral obligation in reference to this point. Kant's notion of a cold-hearted benefactor who acts morally towards others, despite a lack of genuine empathy, presents an example. Another critique takes aim at misanthropy on the theoretical level, stating it is an inconsistent and self-contradictory position that merely approximates a philosophy or ideology. The inconsistency is illustrated in the misanthrope's inclination to criticize society while still actively participating in it and unable to fully disengage. This point of contention applies more to misanthropes, who self-exempt from the negativity they profess and arrogantly view others with disdain, however. Not all misanthropes fit this mold. Another closely connected criticism is that to be a misanthrope is contrary to natural human tendencies and therefore must be considered an abnormality or possibly pathological. Historic philosophical discourse on misanthropy originated with philosophers like Heraclitus, who commonly portrayed as an individualist with little tolerance for human society and whose pessimistic perspective on humanity was rooted in their inability to truly understand reality, Plato's fate discusses misanthropy as a result of unrealistically high expectations and excessive optimism being invariably dashed. The philosophy of cynicism also contains elements of misanthropy, arguing that human actions often just amplify the negative aspects they're trying to escape, such as the establishment of cities for defense, which instead yields higher crime rates and violence than noted cynic, Diogenes, was a pronounced misanthrope who scoffed at societal norms and values, considering people to be hypocrites and superficial beings. Furthermore, early modern philosopher Thomas Hobbes showcased misanthropic views in his work, articulating a dim perspective on humankind as inherently selfish and violent, acting on self-interest even if it means causing harm to others. Let's focus on the ongoing futile struggles of mankind, driven by endless, meaningless desires. These desires are often selfish in nature, contributing to suffering and instances of injustice. The fulfillment of such desires merely births additional ones, thereby engendering more suffering. Great thinkers like Schopenhauer and Nietzsche have devalued important human experiences such as romantic love, individuality, and freedom, suggesting instead that man should embrace asceticism by denying their will. Nevertheless, very few human beings manage to meet this ideal due to numerous complexities. Friedrich Nietzsche, heavily influenced by Schopenhauer, provides a potent example of a cynical perspective, portraying humans as decadent, sick animals, no greater than any other creature. 
He viewed mankind's inherent tendency to establish moral codes for benefiting the weak as suppressing superior entities, thus implying humanity's need for evolution into the Ubermensch. Religion also presents some cynical viewpoints, reflecting upon the sinful nature of humans. Christian teachings tie these sinful tendencies back to the actions of Adam and Eve, where pride, lust, greed, and envy are classified as significant sins. Calvinist theology even asserts total depravity of human beings, with some citing this as a demonstration of misanthropy. Even Buddhism does not turn a blind eye to human flaws, identifying hindrances such as lust, hatred, delusion, sorrow, and despair. Yet despite these criticisms, Buddhism believes in the potential of overcoming these challenges in a pursuit of enlightenment, an accomplishment perceivably extraordinary. However, it's essential to note that many religious teachings argue against a cynical view of mankind, and instead champion kindness and the helping of others. For instance, Christians uphold the virtue of agape, symbolizing selfless, unconditional love, compassion, and a willingness to aid others similarly. Buddhism endorses the practice of loving kindness, emphasizing a compassionate approach towards all conscious being. Renowned writer Jonathan Swift was notorious for his misanthropic tendencies, frequently citing his detestation for mankind. This central theme of misanthropy is evident throughout his esteemed piece. Gulliver's Travels, where protagonist Gulliver's multiple journeys to fantastical lands, home to tiny humans and intelligent horses, emphasizes the deep-seated flaws of the human species, leading to Gulliver's aversion towards his fellow kind. A renowned example of misanthropy is Ebenezer Scrooge from Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol, an unfeeling, isolated miser with a loathing for Christmas festivities and an unwavering obsession with wealth. Other notable authors such as Gustave Flaubert and Philip Larkin have also spun narratives around the theme of misanthropy. Moving to the realm of television and comic books, Mr. Burns from The Simpsons stands as a clear representation of a misanthrope, desiring only to augment his extensive wealth and power with disregard for others' welfare. The Joker from DC Universe represents an even darker form of misanthropy, using violent antics to validate his belief that humans are selfish, cruel, and irrational. Misanthropy should not, however, be mistaken with philosophical pessimism. While philosophical pessimism leans toward the negativity of life and of the world itself as being meaningless and fraught with suffering, as best represented by philosophers Arthur Schopenhauer and Philip Mainlander, misanthropy targets humanity as potential perpetrators of world evils. Though, both philosophies can exist independently. Antitatalism, which sees human existence as detrimental, advocates for a cessation of procreation, often justified by the misanthropic perspective of human flaws leading to harm such as wars, genocides, factory farming, and environmental degradation. Contrarily, philanthropic arguments profit the future human, asserting that non-existence negates potential suffering social movements like the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement and the Church of Euthanasia champion such antinatalistic and extinction philosophies. In this context, human life is transient on this earth, and their wrongdoings are a fleeting nightmare. He predicts that eventually life will no longer exist on earth, resulting in the inevitable return of tranquility. The concept of human exceptionalism, which posits humans' distinct importance among all species, is frequently derived from their unique attributes such as intelligence, rationality, and autonomy. This is further emphasized in religious contexts as having been created in God's image or bearing a God's image or bearing a predestined duty assigned by God. Human exceptionalism also encompasses the belief that human welfare is of higher importance than that other species. This leads to several ethical implications, such as humans holding the power to exercise dominion over other species. Additionally, it condones causing harm to other species if it is beneficial for humans. However, human exceptionalism conflicts with misanthropy, a dislike for the human species, given their contrasting views on humanity's value. Interestingly, some argue that these ideologies can coexist. For instance, one could view humanity as exceptional due to a few extraordinary individuals while harboring negative attitudes towards the average person alternatively. Human exceptionalism could be viewed negatively, highlighting humans' destructive and harmful history, which exceeds any other species. Deep ecology theorists, who emphasize the intrinsic worth of nature and advocate for radical changes in human attitudes towards it, frequently criticize human exceptionalism and lean towards misanthropy. 
Several critics argue that deep ecology is inherently misanthropic as it values other species over humans. For instance, the deep ecology group Earth First received backlash for their controversial stance, celebrating the AIDS epidemic in Africa as a solution to human overcrowding in a newsletter.